to worship at St. James Church on this Feast of the Pentecost. Whoever you are, and wherever you find yourself on your journey of faith, you are welcome here. Blessed be God, most holy, glorious, and undivided Trinity. And blessed, and blessed be God's reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Savior. Amen. And now for our song of praise, join me in saying the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel that it may reach to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. And now, please be seated for the reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is this that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men and women of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, 
for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. The psalm for today is a portion of Psalm 104, which will be read responsibly by half verse. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of other creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number. Creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan. Which you have made the sword of it. All of them look to you. To give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. He touches the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in every one. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of our loving, liberating, and life-giving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. A dear friend of mine is the matriarch in a three-generation trio of well-educated women, the youngest of whom will start high school the next time school starts. As it happened, a little over a year ago, these three smart ladies took a train into New York City and went to the Metropolitan Museum of Art to see the Heavenly Bodies exhibit. With roots in medieval art, the exhibition was said to examine fashion's engagement with the devotional practices and traditions of Catholicism. On display were women's formal gowns, specially adorned, taking the shape of conventional dress, usually found in the convent, and pectoral crosses, once worn with papal robes, which were created by artisans of the Byzantine fashion era. I realize that a display of this sort of embellishment for the sake of religious pageantry doesn't appeal to everyone. And it is not theologically sound for the church of today to place its focus or use its resources for the glorification of its ceremonies. However, this was the exhibit, and for a certain brand of nerdy church people, we sometimes do get a kick out of fancy vestments, intricate religious symbolism, and fine craftsmanship. So, in the gallery, my friend, her daughter, and her granddaughter stood before a mannequin bedecked in a lovely black and white ensemble. As they appreciated it, my friend, reading the item label, announced, That is so wrong! I wish I had a Sharpie to mark that out. The text on the wall claimed that the outfit was inspired by a Franciscan habit which my friend knew were usually brown. She knew that black and white habits belonged to the Dominicans. As she later told me, she must have gone on to explain this at some length because her daughter interrupted her to say to her granddaughter, have you ever heard of someone being pedantic? It was on the train, on the way home, 
when my friend and her daughter were prevented from having a conversation by the granddaughter who would not stop interrupting. The mother turned to the granddaughter and said, sweetheart, quit talking. Upon reflection, my friend realized that not enough listening had been taking place among them. There's always another side to a story about talking. And that's the story about listening. Even the Pentecost story is one we usually hear about the Holy Spirit being given so words could be spoken in a variety of languages. On this occasion at St. James, we signify this by asking people who can speak other languages to simultaneously read from the Acts of the Apostles. We think of this in approx as an approximation of what speaking in tongues might have sounded like. This year, because our way of worship is so changed and we aren't together in a large group and we haven't come up with a way for many people to speak safely at once. Our Pentecost observance does not sound like it usually does. If we limit ourselves to listening to the spoken word, not only will our worship today be different, but many of the things said in the world may be unrecognizable. Have any of you been on Instagram to see a contest being held by New York Nico for the best New York accent? The contest was featured in the New York Times and it got a lot of attention. Even though I was born in New York, and even though I have lived lived in or very new to or very near to New York City more than once, I could barely understand some of the speakers, and some I could not understand at all. Those must be some thick New York accents, because I think they were speaking in English. Just imagine how hard it might be for, for one of us to communicate with one of these New York speakers. Just imagine how most of us would do when placed in conversation with someone from another part of the world. Language is a big barrier to communication. Just imagine how most of us would do when placed in conversation with someone from an entirely different religion. Even if we speak the same language, we may not be able to communicate smoothly. Just imagine how well most of us would, would do when placed in conversation with someone from an entirely different economic situation from our own. We may think we speak the same language, but find out the hard way that we can accomplish very little effective communication. Use of the spoken or written word is not the only way there is to communicate, but it is often the primary way we think of sharing thoughts with someone else. However, I have learned that there are other ways. I don't speak Spanish. Yet on mission trips to Honduras, do you think I had to hear a word spoken by, by children who crowded around me, silent, awestruck, wide-eyed, and watched as I ate my lunch? No interpreter had to tell me they were hungry. Nobody had to translate for me what it meant to see a woman carrying away a little boy 
with dark hair, who had bare feet, wore no shirt, had a round tummy, and who looked at me with eyes yearning out from above clean tear streaks on his dirty face. This did not require words. The gift of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost was not about words. It was about being able to understand each other. It will be important in our world today if you will keep in mind that the Holy Spirit has been given to you as a gift of compassion, not to talk, but to listen, with an ability to look and listen with compassion. No words are required, nor is the speaking of a foreign language. Or try this. You can turn on the television without any sound. You don't have to have captions scrolling across the screen to know that aerial views of cemeteries with thousands of newly dug graves in red dirt is unusual and means a lot of sadness for a lot of people. When you see an image of gurneys with sheet-covered bodies being taken to refrigerated trucks, do you wonder about the person whose job it is to take the body to the truck? Do you wonder about the family of the person on the gurney? Does the family know where this person is? Did they get a chance to say goodbye? When you see tears on so many faces, you don't need language to understand that what is happening as a result of the virus is a horrible thing for countless people. When you see people protesting, gathered in huge crowds in the face of the threat of a feared virus, you know they are enraged. When you see buildings burning and tear gas billowing in the air, you know something is really wrong in America. When you see a video of a white police officer in a position of power over another black civilian who winds up dead, you understand why people are enraged. My friend proved when she was at the museum with her daughter and her granddaughter, there are times when one should not speak. The Holy Spirit can tell us when it is time to listen, to understand, instead of speaking, to explain. Because the gift of the Holy Spirit has been poured out on us, we have been made able to listen with compassionate hearts to the desperate pleas spoken all around us. Galileans once, once spoke in the countless languages of the world. Let it be that today we seek to hear and understand countless voices seeking justice, seeking to be heard, and seeking change. By way of the Holy Spirit poured out on each of us, God gives our hearts understanding. Children of God are speaking, and by God's Spirit poured out on all flesh, we are also able to understand their cries. For there are a variety of gifts from the Spirit. All are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually as the Spirit chooses. 
For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of the one Spirit. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of Christ be always with you.
glorious God. Everything that is given to us reigns forth out of the abundance of your love, even Jesus Christ, our Lord. Bless our gifts and our lives together, that all we are and all we offer give glory to you. In the name of Christ, who is the way and the truth and the life. Amen. Once again, welcome to St. James and worship with us here in Wichita, Kansas on the Feast of Pentecost, the giving of the Holy Spirit to the church. We are delighted to have you worship with us today and we look forward to continuing this new tradition of worshiping together online, um, even after we return to worship together in person. We intend to continue to record our worship services and to provide them online so that those who find themselves in vulnerable populations or are unable to come to church will continue to be part of our congregation of worship for the foreseeable future. It is our hope that we will continue, that we will begin to have small groups of worship in July. So please watch your church publications, particularly your e-tower, the newsletter, and the website, and our church Facebook page for more announcements about specifically when in-person worship may begin again. Sisters and brothers, God loves and cares for each of us. Therefore, cast all anxiety on God and keep alert so that we may remain steadfast in faith with Christ, who supports and strengthens us in all things. We join together now for spiritual communion. Episcopalians are reminded by the Book of Common Prayer that if we are unable to actually consume the consecrated bread and wine due to extreme circumstance, our desire is enough for God to grant the benefits of communion. When being present at a celebration of the Eucharist is apt absolutely impossible. An act of prayer and meditation can provide the means by which you can associate yourself with the Eucharistic action and open yourself to God's grace and blessing. So now, in spiritual communion with one another and all the saints, let us pray in this time of desire for the Eucharistic feast. Prayer, which will be used today on this Pentecost Sunday, comes from a resource I often use for inspiration, Feasting on the Word, a Worship Companion. When we return to worship together as a congregation, we will return to worship with the prayers with which we are familiar. Please stand. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them, them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. At the beginning of time, your spirit moved upon the waters of chaos as you called forth land and sea, 
mountain and valley, desert and tundra, jungle and grassy plain. Your spirit went before Moses and the Hebrew children, a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, leading them through the wilderness. Your spirit roused the hearts of the prophets who proclaimed your judgment upon the nations and called for repentance among your people. For those mighty acts of your Holy Spirit, we praise your name and join in the eternal hymn of all the angels and the saints who sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, indeed, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son. By your Spirit, you anointed Jesus to bring good news to the poor and to proclaim release to the captives. By your Spirit, Jesus confronted the demons of oppression. In your Spirit, he rejoiced as his disciples did great work in his name. At his death on the cross, Jesus yielded up his spirit to you, and by the Holy Spirit, you raised him from the dead. This same enlightening, empowering, enlivening spirit, Jesus promised to all who keep his commandment to love as he has loved. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of the mighty acts and blessed promises of Jesus, we offer ourselves to you in union with his offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send your Holy Spirit upon us when we gather out of love for you, and send your spirit on the bread and wine. Let the bread we break when we are together in your name be true fellowship in the body of Christ. Let the cup we share when we are together in your name be true participation in the new covenant in his blood. By your spirit, Manifest in us the power of your redeeming love, that we may be Christ for the world, serving in his name. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all glory and honor is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, 
where your blessed body and blood are desired this day, and remembering especially our own parish, we offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. We believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since we cannot at this time receive communion, we pray you to come into our hearts. Each of us unites ourselves with you and embraces you with our heart, soul, and mind. Gracious God, let nothing separate us from you. Let us serve you in this life until by your grace we come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. 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 Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in our hearts. In the fullness of your strength, be our wisdom and guide us in right pathways. Conform our lives and actions to the image of your holiness. And in the power of your everlasting love, rule over every hostility that threatens to disturb the growth of your reign, who with God and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, one holy and undivided trinity, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. And now, please join me in saying our post-communion prayer. Thanks be to you, Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given us, for all the pains and insults you have borne for us. Since we now and now receive you sacramentally, we ask you to come spiritually into our hearts. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. May Almighty God, who enlightened the minds of the disciples by pouring out upon them the Holy Spirit, make you rich with God's blessing, that you may abound more and more in the Spirit forever. Amen. Amen. May God, who sent the Holy Spirit as a flame of fire that rested upon the heads of the disciples, burn out all evil from your hearts and make them shine with the pure light of God's presence. Amen. Amen. May God, who by the Holy Spirit caused those of many tongues to proclaim Jesus as Lord, strengthen your faith and send you out to bear witness to Christ in word and deed. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you all.